vectors and their component you can see here we have the y axis and then we also have the x axis you can see we have a vector here now you can see that the y axis and the x axis have a 90 degrees angle right between them and then we have on the xy plane you can see we have vector a at an angle of theta from the horizontal every vector especially in the two-dimensional plane has both vertical component and horizontal component the vector a has an horizontal component referred to as ax and has a vertical component referred to as ay how do you find the component of vector a from trigonometric functions you know you want to find theta here ay represented vertical component can also you know you can also assume it is also it is the same thing as what we have here if you find cos theta of this angle this is what it gives you it gives you cos theta which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse now with respect to this particular angle this is going to be the opposite this is going to be the hypotenuse this diagonal vector is the hypotenuse and then the horizontal component is going to be the adjacent when you say adjacent over hypotenuse that would mean you have ax which is adjacent as you can see here uh, divided by the hypotenuse which is the magnitude of a or vector a so if you make ax the subject of this expression what you would have is ax equal to magnitude of vector a multiplied by cos theta this gives us the horizontal component of vector a you will do the same thing if you want to find the vertical component of vector a in this case what you would look for is sine theta sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse okay so the opposite of sine theta is going to be ay the vertical axis if you just bring this vertical axis here then you have your ay all divided by the hypotenuse which is magnitude of vector a so you have ay equal to magnitude of vector a sine theta so this is your horizontal component and then this is your vertical component so in case you're given any vector a vector a and you're asked to find the horizontal component or the vertical component of that vector or any vector at all this is how to find the horizontal and the vertical components okay very importantly here you will find out that a, a component arrow that points in the direction of an increasing coordinate value bears a positive sign like ax and ay do on the other hand a component arrow that points in the direction of a decrease in coordinate value a negative sign like by so what you will find out here that by is pointing in the negative direction of y all right it is pointing in the decreasing value so by is going to be negative bx is pointing in the x direction the positive x coordinate here so it's going to be a po have a positive value in the previous example bax was a positive and ay was a positive okay but in this explanation you will find out that your vector itself is is pointing is decreasing is pointing in the negative y direction and the main vector b is decreasing here so uh, what we do have is a negative sign for by all right so if you want to find the magnitude of vector a the magnitude of vector a is usually given as a with this directional arrow right on top of it showing that it's a vector so the magnitude of vector a can also be written as a and it will be given as ax squared plus ay squared put both of them in the square root the square root of ax squared plus ay squared so ax is the horizontal component and ay is the vertical component of this vector also another important term here is the tan theta if you want to find the direction of a particular vector you use tan theta equal to ay over ax tan theta is opposite over adjacent so you have the opposite ay divided by ax and you can easily find theta from here by saying from a trig function understanding of trigonometric function uh, theta equal to tan inverse of ay over ax so if you are finding if you are asked to find the direction of a vector this is what you use to find the direction of a vector this expression is very important so take note of it if you are asked to find the magnitude of a particular vector this is the expression that you use 
to find the magnitude of a vector. So we briefly talk about unit vectors. Unit vectors are used to specify directions, okay? And the magnitude of a unit vector is always equal to one. If you have from what you can see here, you can see we have our y coordinate, we have our x coordinate here, and then we have a third coordinate here in a three dimensional analysis, which is the z coordinate. So for the y coordinate, it's represented with, with uh, a vector j, a unit j, and then the x coordinate is represented with i. And then Z is represented with K. So the magnitude of a unit vector is always equal to one. That means the magnitude of I will always be equal to one. The magnitude of J will always be equal to one. And then the magnitude of K as a unit vector would always be equal to one. Unit vectors have no directions and they carry no units. If you are given a vector A, for example, equal to AXI plus AYJ plus a Z K. This would mean that A X represents the horizontal coordinate. A Y will represent the vertical component coordinate, and then A Z represent the three D the third coordinate. And all of these are referred to as vector components. So we have components A X I, components A Y J, and then component A Z K. This is very important. Now, when you have a vector A, how do you find the unit vector? Uh, of a vector. The unit vector of a vector is usually given as that vector itself divided by the magnitude of that vector. That gives you the expression for a unit vector. And the magnitude of a unit vector itself is always equal to 1 in the direction of A. These are important points that you should pay attention to. So how do you add vectors using the component method? For example, if you have component A, which is equal to AXI plus AYJ plus AZK, it has how many components here? You will see that it has three components. The first component is, is AXI, then we have the AYJ, and then we have the AZK. And then we also have vector B with three components, BXI, BYJ, and then BZK. Now, if you want to add these two vectors together using the component method, it's very easy and straightforward. Let's say the summation of the two vectors, the addition of the two vectors is gonna is represented with C. So C vector C will be equal to A plus B. For the I components, you have AX and BX. And so you put AX plus BX I plus for all the J components, you have AY and BY. So you, you, you write plus AY plus BY J. And for the K components, you have AZ plus BZ. And that gives you AZ plus BZ K. All right. This is how to add vectors using the component method. So if you want, since we already said our, you know, addition of the two vectors is given as C, you can say AX plus BX is equal to CX, AY plus BY represented with CY. AZ plus BZ can be represented with CZ if you want. Also, if you want to subtract vectors, you have D equal to vector A minus vector B. So let's represent the subtraction of B vector B from A as D. So we have vector D equal to A vector A minus vector B. What do you do here? Just like we did when we were adding, the I components of the two vectors are AX and BX. So since we are subtracting vector B from vector A, you write ax minus bx i that minus is going to be here don't make the mistake of putting the minus here the minus is going to be here all right so we have ax minus bx i and that can be represented with dx also for component j you have ay and by so you have ay minus by j you can represent that with dy az minus bzk is the third component represent the third components and then you can have it as dz Okay, multiplication of vectors. For the purpose of this study, we are going to be focusing majorly on the dot product. Okay, the dot product is represented with a dot, like this, or with a dot and a circle, or just simply dot. When you say a dot b, this is the expression you use for a dot b. a dot b is called the magnitude of a multiplied by magnitude of b cos theta. So if you make cos theta a subject of the formula, you have cos theta equal to a dot b divided by magnitude of a multiplied by magnitude of b. This expression is very, very important when you want to have the dot product of two vectors. Very importantly, you need to note that when you have two unit vectors multiplied together, two unit vectors of the same direction multiplied together, it's going to give you one. So i dot one will be equal to one, j dot j will be equal to one, k dot k will be equal to one. How did this happen? You can use this expression here 
to prove it. Like we said, a dot b equal to magnitude of a multiplied by magnitude of b cos theta. So if a is i and b is also i, it simply means we have magnitude of i multiplied by magnitude of i cos zero. Why is theta zero here? Because we have i. They are in the same direction and they are the same thing. They are in the, these two vectors are the same. So it simply means there is no angle between them. The angle between them is zero because we're typically talking about the same vector. So there is no angle between them. So this theta can be said to be zero. And then we have cos zero here. From our four figure table or from your calculators, you will find out that cos theta, cos zero is equal to one. So if cos zero equal to one, and you will remember we said initially that the magnitude of i is equal to one. So from all of these, so it simply means magnitude of i here is one, magnitude of i is one, cos zero is one. If you multiply everything together, you obtain one. So you can do the same thing for j dot j, do the same thing for k dot k. Also, i dot j will be equal to zero. i is i dot j equal to zero. Now the angle between i and j, the angle between them is 90 degrees. The angle between I and K is 90 degrees. The angle between K and J is 90 degrees. So if you come here and you say I dot J, you can eventually find out that using this expression, you have magnitude of high multiplied by magnitude of J cos 90. Cos 90 is always equal to zero. Anything you multiply by zero, of course, will give us zero. Magnitude of I multiplied by magnitude of J multiplied by zero, giving us zero. The same thing goes for I dot K, J dot I, J dot K, K dot I, and K dot J. These are very, very important. Please pay attention to them. And of course, cos 90 is zero, cos zero is equal to one. These are things that I think, I believe you should know, or you should know without even looking at the four figure table or checking the calculators out. So let's take it a step further. Multiply, multiplication of vectors. So when you have vectors A and B, we've talked about addition of vectors A and B using the component method. We've talked about subtraction of vectors A and B using the component vector. Now we want to talk about multiplication of vectors A and B also using the component vector. I've given us the introduction to that. So I remember telling us that we have vector a vector b here so vector a a dot b will give us a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z now how to obtain this is not difficult at all and it is not presented in this particular study if you are if you are interested in knowing how a dot b is equal to a x b x please comment below let me know so i can create a video to show you exactly how a dot b becomes AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ. So for now, A dot B is AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ. Now, we already mentioned the fact that cos theta is A dot B divided by magnitude of A multiplied by magnitude of vector B. Since A dot B is what we have here, we just replace this A dot B right up here with AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ here once we do that we can use this expression to do a lot of things when we have two vectors a and b and then we are expected to multiply them or find some missing items this expression is very very important so pay attention to it or take note of it also when you we can also multiply a vector by a scalar a scalar quantity is just a, a, like a magnitude just like a unit for example two is a scalar quantity three is a scalar quantity five is a scalar quantity okay so uh, if you have M, for example, let's say M is a scalar quantity and then you have a vector A with a direction. So a, a scalar quantity is usually, you know, written without any direction on top of it. A vector quantity has this arrow on top of it to show that this expression has both magnitude and direction and this has just magnitude alone. So this is a scalar quantity. This is a vector quantity. If you multiply them out and let's say our vector A is AXI plus AYJ plus AZK, all you need to do is just multiply each of those components by the scalar quantity respectively. So we have M-A-X-I, M-A-Y-J plus M-A-Z-K. 